Hi, today we're going to be talking about using the Luminar 4 sharpening tools and also looking a little bit into contrast. If you're shooting with RAW, and I think you should be, every photograph that you have is going to need some sharpening. RAW is not an actual photo. All it really is is a database that tells the computer how to present the image that you want. If you've got a JPEG, then it's been processed into a photograph that's already sharpening implied. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do sharpening in Luminar 4. Hi, my name is William Beam. If this is your first time here, I try to help people with their post-processing software. So if you want, please go ahead, uh, click like, click subscribe, and you'll see my other videos if you click the bell notification when they come out. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look at a dead fish. And I wasn't kidding, this is your dead fish. If you're curious, this is a salmon. And I chose this because of a couple of reasons. It's got a lot of detail in it. It's got large detail, small detail, and medium detail. And it's also mostly a kind of a gray tone image, you know, from black to lighter colors. And that's going to help us out looking at some of the things that we need to check out. So I said that every photograph from a raw image needs sharpening. And honestly, some of your JPEGs may need it too. It depends on how the JPEG was created. It helps to understand how sharpening works. So there's a couple of ways within Luminar. And also let's kind of get down to what sharpening is. Sharpening will not turn a blurry image into a sharp or tack sharp image. All sharpening does is add blacks to edges. In other words, it's creating the appearance of sharpening by refining the edges of things. It's not necessarily just going to take something that was blurry and magically transpose it into something the camera did not capture. On this fish, you can see we've got scales and how do you tell if it's sharp or not? Well, let's go in just and, and double this. And we're, we're at 100%, we're gonna go into 200%. And you can kind of see edges over here on the fins. You can see the scales a little bit. But what happens when we start to sharpen? I'm gonna go over to the Details Enhancer. This is where the Sharpen tool is. And just for effect, I'm gonna take this to 100%. And you can see that's really done a great job. It's added a lot more sharpening to the fins over here and to the scales. Matter of fact, Let's take a quick look at before and after. So this is before, this is after. And you can see how that detail popped out. One of the things that you wanna do when you're sharpening is you wanna zoom in to see those edges, but you don't want to make your final decision until you zoom back out because the danger is that you may over sharpen and then your subject looks just a little bit too crispy for what it's supposed to be. Now, does it matter on this fish if it looks like this? Or like that, I tend to think this is over sharpened, which is not surprising. It's over here at 100%. This slider for sharpening, though, is not the only tool in your arsenal for deciding what sharpening is going to be. If you come down here in the advanced settings, which may be closed when you look at it, so be sure to click on advanced settings, you're going to see a sharpening radius and sharpening masking. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the fish, and I'm going to show you what those do. I'm gonna take these all the way down to zero for each one of them. The sharpening radius determines how wide a pixel count is it going to take into account for when it's providing sharpening. So the best way to understand it is to look at it rather than for me to tell you. So we've got our sharpening at 100% and I'm going to drag the sharpening radius over. And you can see that's almost double the amount of sharpening that we have. What's happening is when it's looking at these little fine details, it's not looking at just one little line, it's looking at a wider area and saying, this is how much I need to sharpen. When do you need to use a sharpening radius? It depends upon what you're trying to sharpen. So for example, if you're sharpening hair or you're sharpening fur or something that's very slender, you don't want a sharpening radius that's gonna be this wide because it'll start to cause distortion as it's trying to sharpen things larger than the subject matter that you're trying to sharpen. So we're going to bring this back down to, let's say, 50. And let's say that, that this little uh, fin part right here is what we're trying to sharpen. As I bring it up, you can see how it gets much more detailed and sharper. As I bring it down, it gets kind of blurry. And there's details in here that you may or may not want sharpened. But I want to show you something else as a result of 100% sharpening and 100% sharpening radius. We're going to back off on our photo. We'll go back to 100%. And there's some artifacting that's actually happening on the screen here. There's a white background, 
but there's like a little line coming here and one over here. And then there's a few more going this way. And then you can see some underneath the fish. Basically, it's trying to sharpen everything on here. That's where the sharpening masking comes on. And what this does is it limits the area to the edges of objects that you're trying to sharpen. So as I bring this up, those artifacts over here and down here fade away because this is just a, a plain white area. Imagine if you had a blue sky, you're sharpening everything. You don't really want to sharpen everything. The only thing that you want to sharpen is the edge where one color meets another color or one tone meets another tone. So by bringing this masking up, you are refining what that edge area looks like. So let's go take a little before and after now. And this is before, and this is after. And I'll zoom in again, because I want you to be able to see, look at the uh, edges of the scales and see how that part is sharp, but we are not sharpening things that shouldn't be sharpened. In other words, flat surfaces that are the same color. You only want to sharpen the edge of something where it's meeting a different tone or a different color. And that's the difference between these uh, tools. The sharpening radius expands the area that's being sharpening. The sharpening masking limits the area to edges. And there is no one size fits all. Typically, you would not go to 100% on sharpening. You wouldn't go to 100% on sharpening radius, and you wouldn't go to 100% on sharpening masking. Those are really to help you guide and determine what it looks like is the right amount of sharpening. And as I said, you always want to back off and take a look at the whole thing. If you try to sharpen something zoomed in and then just say, okay, I'm good, it's really gonna make your subject look crunchy. Let's go ahead and take a look at another image. So this is the tiger that I found out at uh, Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World. He seemed bored and it shows in his face, but let's go ahead and look on. Something else that you might wanna consider for sharpening is when you're using AI Enhance and the AI Accent slider, it's gonna add some sharpening and some contrast along the way. So Decide, are you going to do the AI Enhance first and then the Details Enhancer or vice versa? My recommendation is if you're going to use an AI tool, do that first. Let it do as much of the heavy lifting as possible and then tweak the results later on using tools like uh, Sharpen inside of the Details Enhancer. So I'm going to bring this one up to about 50 and you can see it's made a change and it looks like there's been some sharpening already. So if you look at the before, particularly in the background that it's kind of blurred out, you can see that it's kind of brought some contrast out. Let's go and get a little closer to Mr. Tiger's face. And again, we're going to do our little bit of before and after. So that's before, that's after. Now, notice these little fine hairs over here. That's kind of what I was talking about when you want to be thinking about the radius that you choose. So let's go into the details enhancer. And we're going to bring sharpen up to 100% again. So now that we've done that, we can see that he looks a little bit sharper, particularly over here, like on the muzzle of the tiger. That is just way too sharp. I particularly wouldn't go up that much. But this is where I want to show you the difference in the radius. If we bring the radius down, it's going to decrease some of the sharpening. And what you're looking at when you're sharpening for something that has fine hairs, look over here where like a couple of these whiskers blend together and you see that it's just kind of looking a little bit too much. I think I am going to go ahead and bring the sharpening down. Let's say to 50%. And then I'm going to bring up the sharpen masking. So what we've done here is we've chosen to have a smaller radius because of the fine details and the hairs and, and whiskers and so forth, and also bring up the masking. In other words, we are limiting the sharpening based upon the pixel radius that we use for sharpening and based upon the mask that we do to try to avoid you know, areas that should not be sharpened. And I'm gonna bring up our compare mode. And you can see that's kind of dull and flat and blurry right there. As we bring this back over, we've got a lot more sharpening going on. Now I think there's a little soft focus on this eye over here, but overall, Look, I'm looking on the muzzle right here where we saw way too much sharpening before. I think sharpening is a tool that is, I use it kind of like a sauce 
too much and you ruin the, the taste of, the, of what you're looking at or what you're trying to eat. You want just enough to enhance what's there, not necessarily to take it over. So again, if we pull this sharpening all the way up, we bring the radius all the way up and we bring the masking all the way down, we have one crunchy looking tiger. And particularly as I back off, I mean, there's, there's just too much detail. It's, it's not really believable. It, it kind of ruins the whole story. So the idea with sharpening is to use this kind of like cantilevers to determine how much sharpening do you want? What is the radius that it should affect? So think about the fine hairs versus if you have something that's a larger object that you need to cover. And then the masking is going to control areas like over here you see with the... Uh, with the rocks, as far as how much of that detail do you want to include or exclude from being sharpened? The sharpen, sharpening masking will try to limit what's going on to edges of tonal colors rather than going to um, a flat area and trying to sharpen something. Because if you're trying to sharpen something that is a flat color, like a blue sky or background, chances are you're going to introduce noise, which is something that we pretty much want to avoid. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, and I'm going to pull up one more photo for that. All right, this is the color wheel, and the reason I'm bringing this up is to let you see what may possibly affect color when you're working with texture, tone, and then color. Sharpening is actually a pretty smart tool. It's not affecting the color at all. I can take this from 0 all the way to 100. I can go ahead and bring the radius all the way up and bring the masking all the way down, and we really don't have any effect of color. Matter of fact, to show you that, I'm just gonna bring over this uh, before and after compare look, and you don't see any impact that's perceptible on the color. That is actually a, a very good thing. Sharpening essentially is a matter of contrast. There are some contrast tools that are going to affect color tones, and you need to be aware of those. So for example, if we go over to AI Enhance, and you bring up AI Accent, it's doing a number of things, and some of them are going to be affecting contrast and affecting color. So as you can see, as I move this back and forth, and we'll bring up a little before and after, it's changing the intensity of the colors, it's changing the tone of the colors. So you're going to affect colors when you use AI Accent. We use AI Structure, which in itself is kind of uh, affecting contrast and tones. I'm going to bring this up. 100. And I'm also going to bring up the boost about halfway. You can see that we did have a shift in color. And you can see as it ranges over here, like in these oranges, it's almost like a gradient now. So there is an impact of color. Something that should be a solid color all the way through now has, looks like there's a gradient in these various colors. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. Another one that I want to show you is in the, the details enhancer. You see that we have small details, medium and large. So let's go ahead and bring up large details. This is another one that I think is actually very good because you don't really see a terrible change in colors. There's a minute change in color, I think, between this side and this side, which should be the same, but it's not a great change in color. But if watch as I move the slider over, particularly on um, this area with this kind of a lime green color, you can see that it does affect it. So you're adding contrast. When you're doing these tonal value changes, you're also affecting color in some cases. So let's go ahead and turn these back. The last one I want to show you is on advanced contrast. This one's really going to affect your colors. So if you bring up contrast, mid-tones contrast, and shadows contrast, we've really changed the color. So this is what it looks like with those settings all the way up, and this is the image that we brought in. So you can see there is definitely, as it's adding contrast, it's really enhancing those colors, making them, this is almost unusable for this kind of yellow color right in here, whereas it should look more like this. So just keep that in mind. When you're working with sharpening, in Luminar 4, sharpening is working very well. When you're working with contrast tools, you're potentially sharpening your image, but you're also potentially changing the colors of your image.
Now that you've had a chance to take a look at some of the sharpening tools and also some of the contrast tools, let me know, what's your impression when you're going through sharpening? Do you just kind of zoom in, look and make sure you've got everything there? Or do you stay zoomed out? And is that a better way for you to judge what your overall image is going to look like? What's your method for sharpening tools? Also, when you start looking at the tonal adjustments, they can do some wonderful things, but just want to make sure that you're aware that they can change colors on you. If this is useful for you, I would appreciate it if you'd share this with a friend who may also be able to use it and like the video. That definitely helps us up. It tells YouTube that we're doing something right. And also, it'd be great if you like this, please go ahead and subscribe and click the bell notification icon. You'll get notified next time I put a video out on Luminar or other topics. Thank you so much. See you again in the next video.